Welcome to the C wing of the MagLab. <laughs> um, in this part of the MagLab, um, our work focuses uh, not necessarily on um, experiments in high magnetic fields, um, but rather on developing the materials that we want to study in high magnetic fields. And in this group, um, one of our main activities uh, is not only developing uh, new ways to grow crystalline materials, but also ways to grow very high quality specimens of, uh, uh, of materials that support very intriguing um, states of matter, like unconventional superconductivity, uh, topological surface states, uh, so on and so forth. So the first thing that I want to show um, is a crystal of silicon, um, which we grew in an apparatus that was built here um, by graduate students and undergraduate students. Um, when you start with a piece of silicon uh, just out of the bottle, uh, it's typically in a polycrystalline form, which means that the atoms are uh, on, on a small scale uh, arranged in a regular periodic lattice, so they're crystalline. But on a larger scale, those little grains are randomly oriented with respect to each other. In a single crystal of the sort that we show here, um, those randomly oriented grains have been lined up perfectly and from the point of view of an individual atom, the crystalline lattice goes on uh, to infinity. And this is exactly the type of thing that we want to study um, because once we arrange atoms into this very uh, periodic type of lattice, it's possible to uh, really understand uh, their fundamental electronic or in other materials, magnetic or superconducting properties. Um, so this is a good example of the sorts of efforts that we make at growing nice crystalline materials. Um, now, not all materials are as simple uh, as silicon. And keep in mind that silicon uh, underpins a lot of technologies that we have these days. Um, but now we're trying to study more complicated electronic states. And sometimes it happens that when um, electrons get together in just the right way, they begin to behave uh, in ways that are not very typical of individual electrons. Um, and that you might call a, a correlated electron state. Um, we'll typically see that, uh, well, in, in this lab, we like to study that type of physics in materials that have uh, D electrons, uh, like iron, um, or F electrons, like cerium. And probably people are familiar with cerium or other members of the lanthanide series because that's the sort of stuff that's in a lighter um, for, for lighting things on fire. <laughs> okay, so those elements have very interesting properties. Um, one subset of behaviors that we're very interested in um, is superconductivity. Uh, superconductivity has been known for just over 100 years now. Um, there's two general classes of superconductors called conventional and unconventional. Um, conventional superconductors typically only work at very low temperatures, close to absolute zero. There are these unconventional superconductors um, which operate at much higher temperatures. And although we've done a lot of work to uh, characterize them, and to try to discover new ones, um, they actually are still at the cutting edge of science. And one of the big efforts at the MagLab is to try and understand the underlying physics of these types of materials. So what I want to show you now is a, um, a piece of yttrium barium copper oxide. So what's shown here is actually not a pure piece, well, a simple piece of the material. YBCO is a black crystalline material. Um, what we've done here is we've wrapped it in aluminum foil uh, to protect the pellet. This pellet was made here. Um, it was made, um, well, I don't remember, but either by middle school students or high school students, which tells you actually how accessible this is. And what I want to show you is one of the incredible properties um, that superconductors have. So I won't be able to show you this. Superconductors transmit electricity um, without dissipating any energy. So unlike your toaster, where when you run a current through it, it heats up. Um, if you run a current through a superconductor, it doesn't heat up. Uh, superconductors do something else as well, and that is that they expel magnetic fields. So in some sense, 
they are a lot uh, like a magnet. If you take two magnets and put them end to end, either they'll you know, stick to each other or they'll repel. A superconductor does something like that, but it's even more special than that. So let me show you uh, something about this. So this is our piece of superconducting material. I'm going to put it in this tray, and then I'm going to fill this up with some liquid nitrogen, um, which is a very cold liquid. So let me put this here. And I'll show you first that liquid nitrogen um, can be a liquid uh, when it's contained inside of basically a giant thermos. Um, compared to the liquid nitrogen, a uh, room temperature is very hot. So if I pour this out on the table, it'll vaporize immediately. And that's what you'll partly see here. So. You can see that it is uh, boiling. That's because um, this metal surface is extremely hot compared to the very cold liquid nitrogen. This is very similar to what you would see if you had a hot stove and you poured water on it, right? It's going to start to vaporize immediately. We also see, um, you know, sort of a, a mist uh, coming off of this. And at least partly, um, that's some uh, condensation coming out of the air. Um, some of it's liquid nitrogen boiling off too. Okay, so it takes a little bit of effort to cool down uh, the superconducting puck. And as I cool it, um, the electrons that are in this material are undergoing a transformation from being um, sort of behaving like regular electrons in a piece of metal, like the tabletop here, um, to entering a new quantum state that is completely unlike anything that we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. And that quantum state is called superconductivity. All right, so I said when electrons are in a superconducting state, they have two main properties. One is that they can go through the material without dissipating any energy, so they don't heat up. Uh, that material as they move through it. The other is that magnetic fields are expelled uh, from the bulk of the piece of superconducting material. Let me just put a little bit more on here. So what is on this track um, is a bunch of rare earth magnets, okay? And they're held in place by a, a twisted piece of steel. Um, just for fun, uh, the name of this shape is a Mobius strip, and anyone can make one of these. If you just take like a strip of paper and put one twist in it and then connect the ends. And it's a special shape that actually only has one side to it. So this is different from a piece of paper where you make a loop and it has two distinct sides. In a shape like this, both sides are connected to each other. Okay, so, so I said that <coughs> the superconductor will expel a magnetic field. That means that they should repel each other. But the superconductor actually has one other property because it's what's called a type two superconductor. And that is that it actually lets a little bit of the magnetic field that's coming out of these magnets. You can imagine the magnetic field is coming out sort of as loops coming out here. And those lines of magnetic field get trapped or pinned inside of the superconductor. So they sort of act like springs to hold it in place. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to pull this out of here. And first of all, you can see that the magnet levitates. And not only that, but as it levitates, it sort of holds on in place, which is different from putting a regular magnet over this. If I bring this down, you can see one of the interesting properties of the superconductor is that the magnetic field pins the superconductor in place. So you can see that as this goes around on the Mobius strip, it can hang from it, it can go from the side, <laughs> until <laughs> the material warms up. So that's an important demonstration, actually. When the material warmed back up, it went back through its superconducting phase transition. The electrons in here stopped behaving as these special uh, particles uh, that have superconducting 
superconducting properties and began to again behave just like regular electrons.